today with scripture led prayer and I'll be reading from the book of Psalms Psalm chapter 36 verses 5 through 12 Psalm chapter 36 verses 5 through 12 your steadfast love O Lord extends to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds your righteousness is like the mountains of God your judgments are like the great deep man and beast you save O Lord how precious is your steadfast love O God the children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings they feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your delights for with you is the fountain of life in your light do we see light O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evildoers lie fallen, they are thrust down, unable to rise. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you once again in the name of Jesus. Today we come to the throne of grace, Father God. We come to worship you today we thank you for this day we thank you for your grace we thank you for the fact that your grace is new every morning that we are here anew today lord god and lord god that we yet again have another chance to worship you today father god we thank you for that father we thank you for your steadfast love oh god your loving kindness father god lord that you hold fast father god that you are never changing father that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Father, that you loved us first so that we could love you, Father God. We thank you that in your love, that while we were yet sinners, that you sent Christ to die for us, to give us the salvation, to give us eternal life. And we cannot do it ourselves, Father God, that we cannot work to get salvation, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your love extends to the heavens, Father God. We thank you for your faithfulness to us, O oh God. We thank you that when you've been faithful, Father God, and we ask that you forgive us, Father, when we haven't even acknowledged you, Lord God, when you have given to us the gifts that you've given to us and the one true gift in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we go through the Christmas season here, Lord God, and Lord, that you gave your Son, Father, we just thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that your love extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds, that your righteousness is like the mountains of God. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your righteousness. Our righteousness is like filthy rags, Father God. We cannot come before you in our own righteousness, Lord God. But our righteousness comes from you, Father God. And Lord God, that you extend to the heavens, faithfulness to the clouds, righteousness to the mountains of God. Father God, you are indescribable, Father God. To the highest of heights and the depths of the sea, Father God, you are the one true God. You are faithful, Father God. Lord God, you are all-knowing. You're all-powerful, Father God. Lord God, that there is no one above you, Father God, that you sit up high on the throne and look low, Father God. And Lord, and your judgments are like the great deep, Father God. Lord, we come before you when we have to give an account for our lives, Father God. Lord, that when you judge, Father God, you judge to the depths of the sea, Father God. There's no middle ground with you, Father God. You're absolute, Father God. You're all about truth, Father God. Lord God, that no sin is in you. No sin could ever be in you, Father God. And we just thank you, Father, for the sacrifice, Father God, of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord and Savior, Father God, we lift up your name, Father God. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah, Father God, because as you extend to the heavens and to the clouds and to the mountains of God, Father God, and to the depths of the sea, Father God, Lord God, that you are absolute, Father God. Lord God, that there is no middle ground in you, Lord God, and you gave us your best, Father God, and help us to give you our best, Father God. Lord God, that we could take refuge in the shadow of your wings, Father God. Lord God, that, that any time, Father God, Lord, any time that we need you, that you're there, Father God. Lord God, that we could take refuge in you, Father God. When we grow weary, Father God, Lord, you will give us rest, Father God. Lord, in this world right now, in the final days, in the last hours, Father God, you could give us 
refuge, Father God. Lord God, that we praise you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for those things, Lord God. The, we feast on the abundance of your house. You give us drink from the river of your delights. You give us your best, Lord God. You give us all of you, Father God, all of your best, Father God. And Lord, you are the fountain of life, Father God. You are the source of life, Father God. You are the way, the truth, and the life, Father God. And no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Father God. And in your light do we see light. We thank you, Father God, for your light. You're the light of the world, Lord Jesus. We praise your name, Father God. Lord, we just praise your name and we pray for those, Father God, who are walking in darkness on this day, Father God. Lord, those who are walking in darkness, Father God, in these last days, in these final hours, Father God. And Lord, use us, Father God. Use us, your children, Father God, to go and share the gospel, Father God. Even in the midst of a pandemic, Father God, Lord, you've called us, Father God, to share the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, oh God. And Lord God, can, please continue, Father God, to show your steadfast love to those who know you, Father God. Lord God, help us, Father God. Help us each and every day. Help us, Father God, to be Christ-like, Father God. Help us, Lord God. Help us in these last days and in these final hours, Father God. And Lord, let not the foot of arrogance come upon us, Father God. Lord, that we do not take you for granted. We do not take what you've done for us, Father God, for granted each and every day, Father God. For this day, Father God, where you've given us another day, Lord God. We thank you for your grace, Father God, and for your mercy, Father God. Lord, you are indescribable, Father God. To the highest of heights and the depths of the sea, Father God, you are all-knowing, you're all-powerful. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you for this day, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, over this time with you, Lord God, this time of worship to you, Father God. Lord God, we pray over the morning worship service, Father God, from this time, Father God. Lord God, to the singing of songs, to praise your name, to the playing of music, Father God, to praise your name, to the sound, Father God, to praise your name, and to the man of God, Father God, who will deliver the word, Father God. Let the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be pleasing in your sight, Father God. Lord, let us clear all of our own agendas, Father God, because nothing compares to you, Father God. Lord, let's worship you today, Father God, and ultimately, Lord God, we are worshiping to an audience of one, and that is you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we praise your name, we love you, we honor you, we worship you, Father God. Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Please forgive us when we've fallen short of the glory of God, Father God, and help us, Lord God. Help us each and every day, please, oh God. We pray right now, we pray and ask all of these things in the pleasant name, the powerful name, and the authoritative name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we give thanks. Amen. morning. Our song says, Christ is what Christmas is all about. Amen. He came to this world, this dark world, and he came for us. He came that we might be saved from sin. Amen. He has the power, and he's the only one Hallelujah. that has the power to take away sin. Hallelujah. So Christ is what Christmas is all, is about. all about. Amen. One, two, ready. Set do 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 Singing glory to the newborn king. Folks coming from miles around. We gotta tell them what's going down. Make a joyful noise, sing and shout. Christ is what Christmas is all about. I wanna tell you about the Son of Man, a little baby born in Bethlehem. Sin from heaven, what a beautiful sight. 
I knew that everything would be all right. Folks still talking about the glorious sound. We want to tell them what's going down. Make a joyful noise, scream and shout. Because Christ is what Christmas is all about. Here's the presents and Christmas is all right with me. Treasure God's love can be. Love can be. Make a joy for noise and sing and shout. Christ is what Christmas is all about. The light of heaven is shining bright. The Lord is saving my soul tonight. You know He's never do part of mine. His sweet love is right on time. Christmas is all about. Hallelujah.
grace and truth. We worship you. For you are the almighty God. You are the creator. You're the sustainer of life. God, we thank you for the grace that you have given us on this day. Your mercies are new every morning. You're faithful. You're just. God, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for one more opportunity to, to say thank you.
God, we're learning that every day is a gift. And so we honor you on this day. You've brought us through 2020. Through danger seen and unseen, you have kept us. lost many and there are many that are scarred but you still have been faithful so God no matter what is going on Lord we want to honor you and give you the praise that is due your name God, you deserve the highest praise because, because of who you are, not just because of what you've done. You are El Shaddai. You are the all-sufficient one. And so, God, we... We pray, God, that you will open our eyes and our ears, our hearts, so that we would be receptive to your voice. God, use this, your servant. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, forgive us. Forgive us for the things that we purposed that we would do in 2020 and yet we have reneged on our commitments. word says confess if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins so Lord we confess and we ask forgiveness even now God there are those that need to know you as their Lord and Savior will you speak to their hearts Help us, God, to know that we cannot presume on tomorrow, for tomorrow may very well be too late. Lord, bless your word. In Jesus' name. Good morning, and we welcome you to Rising Star Baptist Church. We welcome those who are looking on Facebook and later on YouTube. We just are glad to be here. I want you to get your Bibles, uh, get used to looking at your Bibles, um, and turn to the book of James the book of James chapter 4 we'll be looking at verses 13 through 17 now I'll read it it says come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a while and then vanishes away. Indeed, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. 
Therefore, to the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. My hope is that everyone had a wonderful Christmas and things were certainly different this year and it has reinforced the importance of family. It's reinforced the importance of valuing the people that you love now while you have the chance. We've learned through 2020 to never take a day for granted. Probably the most important lesson that I've learned this year is to never presume on tomorrow. The entire world has been on pause for the last nine months focusing on COVID, focusing on how we're to live in a safe environment. We've had to reevaluate everything that we considered normal. We now have a new normal and the new normal is waiting for tomorrow. <laughs> to see what's going to happen. And on uh, yesterday, if it were not yesterday, the day before yesterday, there was a bombing in, in Nashville. The reality is, life is so futile, and if we look at 2020, we are certainly reminded that tomorrow is not promised. You know, I, it wasn't that long ago when 9-11 happened and the Twin Towers came tumbling down and on 9-10, the people didn't really concern themselves with God, but 9-11, everybody was interested in the church and everybody was uh, trying to see what God had to say. I think... God has our attention as we look forward to tomorrow. This morning, I'd like us to look at verses 13 through 17 here in James chapter 4, where we'll entertain the idea of the sin of presumption. The sin of presumption. To presume is to suppose that something is the case on the basis of probability. And so when we look at uh, the things that's been going on and for years and years and years, we, we assume or we propose that maybe tomorrow is going to come. To presume is to suppose that something is the case on the basis of probability. James in this chapter has highlighted the need for humility. The height of self-exaltation is pride. It's presuming on things as if you are God. We do it all the time without even really thinking about it. We just make plans and we don't really include God in our plans and we just presume on tomorrow. This morning we'll see that presumption is sin. There are four things that I want us to be aware of this morning as we look at these few verses. The first is, pride expresses itself in presuming on the future. If you remember the latter part of chapter 4, in fact, he begins in verse 1. He says, what are the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and you do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and you cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask, and you ask and you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend them on your own pleasures. You adulteresses, 
Do you know that, not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires a spirit which he has made to dwell in us. But he gives greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. That theme is carried all throughout this chapter, the, the pride and the, the lack of humility God is opposed to. He says in verse 17, I mean verse 7, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Verse 10, humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. As I said earlier, the height of self-exaltation is presumption, presuming on tomorrow. Making plans without including God in your plans. So as we look at verse 13, the first thing I want us to highlight is the pride ex expresses itself in presuming on the future. He says this. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow... We will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. This, this person, presumably a believer, a merchant that is a business person, is presuming on the future. He presumes on the days. And look in verse 13a, he says, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow. This person is making plans about tomorrow as if he or she has the control over tomorrow. It's presuming on the days. How many of us have been guilty of that sin? How many of us had made plans this year only to have a, a empty space at the table? So many lost lives, so many plans on tomorrow. And this is why, church, we need to focus on today. Today is the day of salvation. The day that you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Tomorrow may never come. This person says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow making plans for the future as if they have control over the future. Proverbs 27, 1 says this, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring forth. Who would have ever thought that over 400,000 people would have died from a coronavirus, the corona coronavirus? Who would ever, ever thought that all travel and, and, and family ties, all of those things were affected, making plans. He says, and there is somewhat of an arrogant tone. You'll see this here in, later in this text. He says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow. And then we see the presumption of destination says, we will go to such and such city. <laughs> now that might sound, it might not sound sinful, but there is, a, there is an arrogant tone here. We're going to go to such and such city without the idea of knowing that God is the one who gives safe travel. Listen, those who are in church, you're here because God gave you safety. 
When you go to work every day, do you realize how many people get into accidents and die on the way to work? And God kept you. And we take for granted the idea that we're going to go from one destination to the other and without praying and asking God's blessing. He says, we will go to such and such a city. Many have made plans and have not fulfilled those plans. So there's a sin of destination, the presuming on the days and the presuming on the destination. And then we see here is a presumption on time. He says, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there. Now, when we're looking at this now a little closely at the text, it seems rather, rather ridiculous that they would make these plans not knowing what tomorrow will be. Take heed, listen, this is for us today. You'll note that there's really nothing wrong with making plans, and we'll see that here in a moment. But this person in this text has a, an arrogance about themselves. In fact, later on it says they boast their arrogance. And he says all of these things are evil. There is a presumption on the days. There's a presumption on destination. There's a presumption on time. And then there's a presumption on income. It's almost as if they say, we're going to go there. We're going to spend a year there. We're going to make so much money. Do you realize that you have no say-so in how much you really make? The job that you have, God gave it to you. Don't forget that. God gave you the job. If you're a doctor, he gave you the mind to be able to go to school. He equipped you with all that you need so that you can make income. There was a presumption on income. He says, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. How many businesses this year went into 2020 say, saying, I am going to go and I'm going to start this business and I am going to make a profit? How often did we see this year on the news that new businesses have now folded? They're looking for government help to open the doors. I was looking at the news on this morning of a business owner in Nashville, Tennessee, already straining because of the coronavirus. All of the businesses are shut down, and now their walls are blown in because someone decided to place a bomb in the building across the street. And there's a look of total desperation. What am I going to do now? Perhaps when we pray the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, we will have a sense of, of, of uh, 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 it'll be more relevant to us as we've learned to not presume on tomorrow. Pride expresses itself in presuming on the future. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Look at verse 14. We'll see not only does pride express itself in presuming on the future, pride expresses itself in presumed control over your life. <laughs> That's an arrogant idea that I have control over my life. Thinking about the, the writer of Invictus, the common line is, I am the captain of my ship. Something like that. I'm the master of my fate. 
fate and the captain of my ship. Really. <laughs> really. And, and, and in fact, there, there are times when I've read that and I thought, yeah, I'm the, I'm the master of my fate. Motivational speakers will tell us, listen, if you want to do something, you got to go out and you got to get it. You're the master of your fate. Listen, nothing can happen in life unless God allows it. <laughs> you better make sure that your ship is anchored in Jesus Christ because the storm winds are going to come. And if you are not anchored in Christ, you will be shipwrecked. Pride expresses itself in presumed control over your life. Look at verse 14. He says, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You don't know. None of us know. We make all of these plans, and, and it's okay again to make plans, but the reality is we don't know. Remember when I was a young man in, in church, and the old folk would sing this song. It said, this may be the last time. May be the last time. I don't know. I thought that was a strange song when I was younger, but the older I get, the more I realize that really today, this could be the last time. This could be the last time that I could say I love you to my wife and my son and my church. This might be the last time that I stand here behind this pulpit with the privilege and opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ on my way home. This could be the last time that I ever step foot in this church, this may be your last time to give your life to Christ, to make it right. Stop trying to get yourself together. If you could get yourself together, you would already be got together. <laughs> but the reality is, you need to give your life to Christ today. Well, tomorrow might be too late. I guess I'm setting this up for Brother Kent to sing tomorrow at the end. <laughs> Yet, verse 14, you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. Listen, he says, you are just a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanishes away. You're a vapor. That's, your life is like a vapor. You're here today, and tomorrow it just vanishes away. Psalm 39, 5 says, Behold, you have made my days as hand breaths, and my lifetime as nothing in your sight. Surely every man at his best is a mere breath. You think you all that. You just a mere breath. Psalm 78, 39 says it this way. Look at verse 38. He says, but he being compassionate forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. And often he restrained his anger and did not arouse all his wrath. Verse 39, thus he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not return. Psalm 144.4 says this, A man is like a mere breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Isaiah 2.22 says, Stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils for why should he be esteemed? Listen, tomorrow is not promised. He says, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. For you are just a vapor 
that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Pride, the height of pride, expresses itself in presuming on the future. Secondly, pride expresses itself in presumed control over your life. We have no control over our lives. Our lives are in his hands. Thirdly, we'll see here in verses 15 and 16 that pride is, expresses itself in boasting about your plans. Come now, verse 13 once again. You who say today or tomorrow we will go to such a such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Verse 15. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Pride expresses itself in boasting about your plans. Proverbs 19.21 says it this way. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. As I said earlier, it's okay to make plans. In fact, uh, if you're a business owner, you no doubt have a business plan. You have the steps that you need to take to try to generate income, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this person, this person is making these plans without God. Listen, in fact, it's, it's probably a good idea to not make plans until you consult it with God. There are many uh, things that we wanted to do ourselves, and God really didn't want us to do those things, and we can't understand why it didn't work. It didn't work because we never included God in the planning. It's almost like we come and we arrogantly, we make these plans and we don't consult with God. And, it, and it's almost as if we say, even when we pray, when we say in Jesus' name, we think that Jesus is obligated to, to make that prayer happen. It could be that our prayer should be without putting his name, tacking his name on the, on the end of our prayer, perhaps we should start asking him at the beginning, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And wait to hear his voice, and if he does not speak, don't move. It could be that you went on and God wasn't saying no, but he was saying wait, but you wanted it so bad that you pressed on, and, and now you see that you should have waited. Pride expresses itself in the boasting about your plans. He says in verse 15, knowing that you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away, and then he says, instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills. We will live and also do this or that. Now, I don't, know if he, I don't know if he's really saying that you need to actually say that, but I believe it's more of a posture of the heart that says, thy will be done. You're boasting about your plans, and, and yet you ought to be exemplifying a life that is dependent on God. This is the attitude. The attitude is, I don't need you, God. If anything that we've learned this year is, Lord, we need you. Every hour, the old folk would say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. There was a sense of dependence on God for the day-to-day. -day. 
And God has brought us back to a place where we are crying in the whole world, not just in isolated places. The whole world has acknowledged that I need thee. Oh, Lord, I need thee. The young and old, the black and white, the rich and the poor, God has brought us all to a place where we must acknowledge our dependence on him. Pride expresses itself in the boasting of our plans. Instead, he says, you ought to say, if the, Lord's wi if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that. Acts Chapter 18, verse 21, says it this way. Paul commonly would refer to doing things only if the Lord wills. Paul returns to Antioch, and he says to them in verse 19, he says, they came to Ephesus, and he left them there. Now he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay for a longer time, he did not consent, but taking leave to them, saying, I will return to you again if God wills. And he set sail from Ephesus. Paul understood that his plans were in God's hands. In Romans chapter 1, verse 10, we see the same sentiment. Romans chapter 1, verse 10 says this. Let me start back at verse 8. Paul had a desire to visit Rome. He says, first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all because of your faith that is being proclaimed throughout the whole world for God whom I serve in my spirit in the preaching of the gospel of his son is my witness as to how unceasingly I make mention of you always in my prayers making requests if perhaps now at last by the will of God I may succeed in coming to you. Paul understood that if he was going to make it to Rome he would only make it be by God's will. Romans chapter 15, verse 32, we see the same sentiment. Says it this way. Again, talking about Paul's plan to go to Rome. He says this, verse 30. Now I urge you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be rescued from those who are disobedient in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem, they may prove acceptable to the saints, so that I may come to you in joy by the will of God and find refreshing rest in your company. And he says, now the Lord God of the peace be with you. Amen. Paul understood that if something was going to happen, it was going to happen by the will of God. Look at verse 16. Again, 15. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, here's the problem. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. You're boasting about tomorrow. You're making plans. You're even boasting about your plans. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go there. That arrogance is the idea that I control tomorrow. And none of us 
control anything, certainly not tomorrow. He says, all such boasting is evil. The sin of presumption, it's evil. To make plans without God is evil. So pride expresses itself in presuming on the future. Pride, self-exaltation expresses itself in the presumed control over your life. Pride expresses itself in the boasting about your plans. I can't remember the young man's name. He, he's a motivational speaker now, and I like listening to him because he was a college athlete on his way to the NFL. Kiki is uh, played at Tennessee. I know you know, Brian. Yeah, yeah, I, I forget what his name is, but I like listening to him because he tells a story. He was a top prospect, put in all these years playing football, and people uh, put him down and he was a few games away from finishing, made it, went up to make a tackle, and was paralyzed. How many times have we heard stories like this? And someone was going, Icky, Icky Johnson? Inky, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you take the time and look at his story. How many times have we made plans in our Plans were derailed because something happened that was unforeseen. The reality is if we don't realize that we're not in control, we end up angry at God, as opposed to seeing our arrogance as sin against him. Do you know the nature of sin is really just independence of God from God? That's what sin is, independence from God. It's, it's you saying, I don't need you, God. And the reality is, many of us live that way. We want God in the box. And when we turn the channel through our prayer in the right way, we want God to just pop out and give us what we want. But God is no jack in the box. He is a maker and creator of heaven and earth. Pride expresses itself in presuming on the future. Pride expresses itself in presumed control over your life. Pride expresses itself in boasting about your plans. <laughs> and lastly, pride expresses itself in a lack of repentance for being proud. Do you realize that you know, here in 2020, I think the thing that we really need to do is we need to get on our faces and just repent. We've been presumptuous. We've made plans and God has not been a part of those plans. In fact, just want you to know if you're a believer, you, you've been purchased with his blood. You are not your own. And so the height of self-exaltation expresses itself in the lack of repentance for being proud. Look at what he says in verse 17. Verse 16. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, he says, to the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him, it's sin. Now that verse, I read it over and over, and it almost seemed to be out of place. But he's really highlighting this idea of, of pride. And those that don't humble themselves and those 
This is why the point is that pride expresses itself in a lack of repentance for being proud. Those who know that pride, uh, God hates this, but if you know to do right and you don't do it to you, it's sin. We ought to repent for being proud. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 47, it's talking about being ready. Verse 47, the key point. We start at verse 35. It says, be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for their master when he returns from the wedding feast so that they may immediately open the door to him and he comes when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves who the master will find on the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them, whether he comes in the second watch or even in the third and finds them so blessed are those slaves. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have allowed his house to be broken into. You too be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. While you're making your plans, you need to be planning on Christ to come. And he's coming at an hour that you do not expect. Peter says this in verse 41 of the same chapter. Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone else as well? And the Lord said, who then is the faithful and sensible steward who his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will put him in charge of all of his possessions. But if the slave, listen, says in his heart, it's a posture. If the slave says in his heart, my master will be a long time in coming and begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with unbelievers. Verse 47, and that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will will receive many lashes. But the one who did not know it and committed deeds worthy of a flogging will receive but few. From everyone who has been given, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much of, of him they will ask all the more. Therefore, to the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. Pride expresses itself in presuming on the future. Pride expresses itself and presume control over your life. Pride expresses itself in boasting about your plans. And pride expresses itself in a lack of repentance for being proud. Father, we, 
we come in the name of Jesus. And we confess. We confess our sin of pride. Lord, often we have made plans for the future without including you, without getting your approval. We make commitments for the future without seeking your face. Lord, we're sorry. Lord, we have presumed control over our lives. We've made plans to go here and there and stay there for periods of time. Lord, we acknowledge that only you have control. We're but a vapor, a breath, here today and gone tomorrow. We ask that you would take control over our lives. God, we confess about our boasting. I know we've not really boasted with our mouths, but we boasted in our arrogant plans. And so we ask that you would forgive us. Lastly, God, we ask that you will forgive us for being prideful and standing on that pride as a badge of honor. Lord, we repent of our arrogance and our independence. Lord, help us to be ready for the bridegroom, to be preparing for your arrival. Lord, as we move into another year, if it is your will. Let us be more mindful of your will. Will your kingdom come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, you've brought us to a place when we say, give us this day our daily bread. When we acknowledge that it is you that provide for all of our needs. Lord, your word says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you. Lord, we are asking that you will lift us up. Lift up those families that have lost loved ones. Lift up those who have lost their businesses. Lift up those who have lost their health. Thousands and thousands and perhaps millions have lost their income. The subsidies have stopped. They don't know how they're going to make it. Pray that they would look to you. More than anything, God, I pray that if there are those who don't know you as their Lord, that they would make the decision today to surrender their lives to you. Lord, your word says, if we confess with our, our mouths and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we would be saved. If you desire a relationship with God, you 
you must know that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. You must know that even though we all fall short and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So if it is your desire to walk with God, today confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord say I am a sinner I realize that I've missed the mark I've tried to do things on my own I've presumed on tomorrow I've made plans without you And so I ask that you will forgive me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross according to the scriptures. I believe that he was buried and I believe that God raised him from the dead. And so by faith I put my trust in Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And now, God, I I thank you for giving me your spirit, for giving me life, for giving me the means to live dependent on you. I realize that my life is in your hands. I've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I am not my own. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses in the same way that we have forgiven those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to ask if our brothers will come. This is an impromptu. Always try to tell them to be ready. (laughs) Don't be pouting, Bob. Somebody needs to know that they need to get it right today. Amen.
Won't you please let me Praise God.